Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys how we can create a smooth sliding text animation inside of DaVinci Resolve 16.1. So for this tutorial, we're going to be using Fusion Composition to make a simple effect from scratch, and hopefully this will give you a little bit of an idea of how to work in Fusion Nodes to, in order to create something that specifically matches your needs. So in this video, I'll be showing you some keyframe animation, but also how to take keyframes and to add ease curves to the keyframes so that it will start faster at the start and end faster at the end of an animation, such as appearing onto the screen. And I'll also show you how to add motion blur to your text movement, which can make it look a little bit more interesting. So in order to do a fusion composition, you should be over on the edit page of DaVinci Resolve. So that's the third one over from the bottom, your main editing area. And you go to the effects library and from there, effects and fusion composition. So take this and drag it onto your video timeline. If you look through the fusion composition, what you'll notice is that there's absolutely nothing right now. But what we can do with the fusion composition is go over to the fusion page and start adding nodes to it in order to create our custom effect. So fusion page is right next to the edit page at the bottom. So go ahead and click on that. And when you get there, you should only see a media out node. Now note that there's no media import node like there would be with a regular video clip because this is completely from scratch. There's no import. We have to create everything ourselves. So the first thing that we're going to do is to create two text plus nodes. You can find them over on the left. If you So if you click the button here twice, the second one that gets created will automatically be combined with the first one because it automatically selects the first one when you hit it the first time. So we get this merge node and they're already brought together. And we can take the merge node and feed it to the media output node. At this point, we're pretty much done with the node setup down here. So we can kind of minimize that. I'm going to click right above this animation timeline and drag it down so that the node area is more hidden and more of our space is dedicated to the preview window. Uh, next, we should add some text that we want to display for the titles, of course. So for the top text, I could make that a channel name. So Chris Tutorials, for instance. And then on the bottom text, I can make that the URL to get to my channel. So I have one that is slash C slash Chris tutorials on YouTube. And also make this left preview window a little bit less focused. And next, we're going to want to set the main position for our text title. So that could be in the center area and then have one on top of the other. Or you could have it in the bottom left corner, another popular choice. Really, you could put it in any of the corners if you really wanted to, but those are probably the two most popular locations. So for this example, I'm going to take the two text titles and align them up on the left side. So one thing I can do to make sure that they align properly is to set the horizontal anchor to the left side. Um, so when we click this, what you'll notice is that the position of the text is now going to be completely to the right of the point uh, that is basically controlling the location of the text. And so if I do that with the second text here, going over to bottom text and then horizontal anchor on the first tab and hit left, then as long as the point has the same location on the screen, uh, then those two are going to line up regardless of how long the text is in terms of its characters. And because we're going to move this over to the left side, it should be really handy. And so that will make it easier to line it up properly on the left side right now. So what we're going to do is to take both of these text elements and now go over to the second tab layout and we'll control the position of the point here. So we want to change the center X and bring that over to the left edge and then Y can go down wherever we feel comfortable with having it display on screen. And then we're going to take this same value 0.8. 037 on the X and we're going to copy that over to the position for the top text as well. So same deal. We go over to the layout tab and then control V to paste in that value. And this should have these two text elements lined up horizontally on the left side. Um, for the Y position, we can just manually adjust that until we get it where we like it. Of course, for this title, we probably want the subtitle to be de-emphasized. So we can decrease the size of that. So let's go to bottom text. And uh, it should be done more on the first tab, the text tab. We will decrease the size of that to something like 0 0.6. And maybe we adjust the position of the top text a little bit more to have it sit on top of it. Could even increase the size of the top text. Um, just note how it's going to look with respect to your main video frame. So overall, I think that size is pretty good for something that's going to slide onto the screen and sit there for a few seconds. 
You might also want to change the you might also want to change the font on one or two of the title texts to further emphasize which one is which. Uh, so we can go to font and where it says Open Sans here, change it to one you either have on your computer or that you could install from the internet. So one that I often like to use from defont.com is called Babus Noi. Uh, so it usually works pretty well for titles. So I'll increase the size here a little bit since the font size didn't really match anymore and increase the location a little bit. So once you've customized your text and the main location you want it to appear in your animation, then we can go ahead and start creating animations for both the top text and the bottom text. So we need to do this individually. So what we should do is create keyframes. And in this case, I'm going to put them at frame 30 and 90, which is going to be the starting and end point for where it just kind of sits here in this bottom left corner. And then we will create keyframes at 0 and 119, which will set the locations where the text is off of the screen. And then it will animate between those points as the keyframes play out. So at frame 30, I'm going to go over to the inspector in the layout tab for center X and center Y. And I'm going to click on the little gray diamond over to the right to create a keyframe for that node. Then at frame 90, I'm going to go there and create another keyframe by clicking on the node. And I'm going to do the same thing for the bottom text. So go back over to the layout tab, frame 90 in the animation timeline, click on the keyframe, and then go to frame 30 and do it there as well. So now we can set the locations for the top being off of the screen. So I'm going to click on top text. I'm going to go to frame zero and set where the text should start at the start of this fusion composition. So let's take the center Y and I'm going to decrease it until it is off screen. So note that when you already have keyframes set for a property, and you go to a different frame where there's not a keyframe and you change the value, it will automatically create a keyframe. So you'll see this little diamond turn red automatically. So if we decrease the X position until it is off screen and we let go, select a different frame, uh, you would be able to see that there is a keyframe there. But you can also tell because you can see that the property is actually animating over time. And we can go to frame zero and hit play and have that actually preview there out, seeing roughly how fast it would go. Note that whenever you play something back in the Fusion page, it's pre-rendering everything, so we'll likely play slower than when you actually export it for the final video. And uh, now we can go to frame 119 to set the final location for the top text. So let's go ahead and increase that until it goes over to the right off the screen. So it's going to slide in, and then after 60 frames of sitting around, it will slide off the screen to the right. So if I go ahead, go back to frame zero and hit play, you'll see that this is exactly what happens. Okay, so now we need to do the same thing with the bottom text, but to make it a little bit more interesting, instead of going from left to right with the bottom text, we'll make it go bottom to top. So let's go to frame zero for that bottom text, and I'm going to decrease the Y position until it's off screen. So let's go ahead and slide that down there, and then we'll go to frame 119 and set the final location for the bottom text, which should be off the top of the screen. So that would be some value above one there. And now if we go to frame zero and hit play, we should be able to preview this simple animation. Okay, so there's two things we can change to make this a little bit more interesting. One is to set a motion blur, which will make it blurry as it moves. So in order to do that, we just simply go to top text, go to the last tab over here for settings, and check motion blur. Do the same for the bottom text as well, assuming you want them both to have it. And then if you go to any frame that has motion, you'll see that the text looks a little bit blurry. But as soon as it hits frame 30, that blurriness will go away. So it only applies the blur for the areas which are actually moving. So next for the smoothing part of the text animation, you might notice that the way it moves is completely linear in terms of its speed or velocity. So it moves at the same speed while it's moving, but we could actually make it speed up, and in other words, start slow and then end fast as it reaches that frame 30, or it reaches that frame 120. And doing that makes the animation look a little bit more natural rather than having it start and stop completely abruptly. So in order to do that, we need to open up the spline window. You can find that at the top right hand corner. And when you do that, you'll see all of the properties which you have keyframed uh, for this node fusion composition setup. And the ones we're interested in are displacement for the top and bottom. So we can actually check both of those and see them on the graph. 
So I'm going to hold control and middle mouse wheel zoom out so that you can kind of see what's going on. You can see that the value of these properties changes from frame 0 to 30 and 30 to 90. So that matches exactly what's happening up there. And you can also see that the lines for these are completely straight. So to make that smoothing effect, we need to actually give them a curve. So the quickest way we can do this is to select all of the points here. So I'm going to drag a box around all of the pink lines here. So with all the points selected, go ahead and right click and then go to the ease menu. For this video, I'm going to recommend you either use n quadratic or n cubic. Uh, the difference is that with n cubic, it'll take a long time for the speed of the movement to get going. But then once it gets going, it's going to move very fast at the end. So with n quadratic, it'll look relatively like it did with linear, but it does have a little bit of the easing there. You can tell that it starts slow and ends fast. So if it's going up very fast on this graph, that would be when the speed is going fast. And when it's going left to right faster than it's going up, that's when the speed is going to look slow. So uh, we can play this back with n quadratic. And we can see that the effect of the smoothing isn't that dramatic. And so we could use that, and that's probably what I would do. Just to show, though, we could select all the points one more time, right-click, go to easing, and do n cubic. So with the n cubic easing, you can see that the speed at the end is dramatically higher uh, than it is at the start, and it takes longer for it to get going. So let's go ahead and play that back so you can kind of see what that would look like in this case. So I'll go ahead and hit play here. So you can see it starts slow, but then at the end, it's very, very fast. And here it's going to start slow, it's going to start slow, and then it's going to go really fast. So after letting it pre-vendor a few times and zooming in, hopefully you can see that it does start slow, but ends very, very fast. So that's going to be just about it for what you need to know in order to create a smooth sliding text animation inside of DaVinci Resolve 16.1. I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future video content.